Hi everybody, and welcome back to another Look Back review. God of War isn't a game series I knew all that well. I played the PSP games as I got them free with PlayStation Plus a few years ago on my Vita, but apart from this and some references here and there, it's not one I know personally. From the outside looking in, Kratos is a single-minded brute with a foray into rage and daddy issues. The series always seemed to be nothing more than a button-bashing romp, which although seemed fun, was never anything I was missing, with games like Dynasty Warriors and Borderlands filling that niche for me. Only after a flurry of high praise and comments from the gaming industry, and a personal mission of my own to play more highly regarded titles I wouldn't usually try, did God of War find its way onto my PS4 during a sale. And can I just say, playing it now on my PlayStation 5, after doing a full playthrough not too long ago on my PlayStation 4, the game looks and runs incredible. 4K, HDR, 60 frames a second, all words I can use that let you know I've watched at least one video from Digital Foundry. Nailed it! But if you have a PS4, there aren't any major downsides to playing it there if you haven't got a PlayStation 5 yet. Of course, your PlayStation 4 may sound like it wants to take off, but that's common if you do anything even slightly taxing with that, so that comes with the territory. So let's take a boat ride through Midgar and find out if this game is worth playing today. God of War games have traditionally been a mix of story, combat and puzzles, with the narrative focused on Kratos, a warrior of Sparta gifted with godly powers in his homeland of Greece. But this turns into a monkey's claw situation, when he gets what he wants but at a great cost. Like if you're able to play video games for as long as you wanted, but the only game you could play was something like Superman 64. Do people even know what Superman 64 is? It's the one with all the circles. It's a bad, it's a bad game. It's a bad game, right? This then sees Kratos on a revenge mission to kill just about every god he meets, all the way up to the god of thunder, Zeus himself. The game had always had a heavy emphasis on revenge and anger, and this came through in the combat, narrative, environments, and enemy designs. Big visceral battles with blood everywhere, screaming and gruesome death animations were common. It might not have been my type of game, but it did fully commit to these themes, and I respect that. From the experience I had of it, I had to say it was fun to play through. It often walked a fine line between something like Zelda games and Devil May Cry. You would find new weapons with some enemies only being able to be killed with that weapon, along with puzzles that again needed certain items to overcome. The games themselves always gained a good reception, but it was a common opinion that when the last game dropped on the PlayStation 3, the series had grown stale, and its fans were growing tired of the same formula and wanted something new. Jump over to now, and when we start God of War, we start on this scene of Kratos cutting down a tree. The game then does something that it continues to do a lot in this game. It puts you in control of Kratos, and makes you play through what could have been a cutscene. You start to swing this massive axe, the tone is quiet but tense. What you're doing feels important. It feels almost intimate. Already you feel like Kratos has calmed down. The normal anger we've seen in the past is here, but it feels restrained, almost muted. From this single, slow and intense shot, I'm already invested in what Kratos is doing, and I want to know more. Then a few moments later, we see a small boy. Found some. Breaking the tension and bringing Kratos back from his own thoughts. This is when we learn that Kratos has a son, and then the gravity of what is going on slowly starts to kick in. The next few scenes are all highly impactful. Music raises at critical times to help us connect with what Kratos is thinking, what he's feeling, but also what he might be hiding. Another theme throughout the whole game, and in the first scenes of the game we can see, Kratos is clearly hiding his feelings and thoughts from his own son Atreus, constantly coming across as harsh and cold. We also continue with the same single shot the whole game, so we never feel like we can escape this tense relationship Kratos and his own son have. It's an amazing way to keep us locked into what's going on, beat by beat through every part of the game, seeing it all from Kratos' point of view. After a short back and forth, it's decided you'll take the ashes of Kratos' wife and Atreus' mother up to the highest peak in all of Midgar to honour her last request. Kratos, though, doesn't believe Atreus is ready for this task and insists they go home until he feels Atreus is ready. You are not ready. Thankfully for us, after a conversation with a rather helpful stranger, 
I thought you'd be bigger. But you're definitely the one. Kratos decides they should leave, and our journey fully begins. As a new parent, I can somewhat understand why Kratos treats and speaks to Atreus the way he does. It feels like he's trying to protect him in his own angry dad kind of way. It can be seen in the various people you meet. Kratos will often try and avoid speaking to anybody he doesn't know. Not because he might not want to speak to them, although I can't say that isn't part of the reason. Dwarves are awfully resourceful. And irritating, based on the two we have met. It feels like he's trying to protect his son from the possible dangers they might bring to them. Again, in his own loving, angry dad kind of way. Kratos clearly has not had the greatest relationships and role models throughout his own life, and he's learned that most people will try to use him, or letting people close to you will cause more pain once they're taken away. To him, they can be a weakness an enemy can exploit, so he tries to avoid them. But Atreus clearly doesn't think like this. He's young, kind and naive. He often opens up to other characters at the drop of a hat, which Kratos visibly disapproves of. And that's what I like about their relationship. See you being away from home. Sheep. She's dead. We're taking her ashes to the highest peak in the realms. Ashes? It was her last wish. Boy. At the start of the game, Atreus is a young boy that hasn't seen battle. He doesn't really know the outside world and the dangers it can bring. But Kratos is so shut off from people that it's because of Atreus. They can often progress as he's willing to ask for help, speak to people he doesn't know, you know, like a believable kid. Some of the best moments are when a situation leads up to Atreus and another character coming up to a solution to a dead end situation, and then them both looking at Kratos, waiting for him to give up and agree. I see a lot of inspiration from everyday parenting here. We a little boy or little girl really want something like an ice lolly or an ice cream and you say no. <laughs> But then your friend or their auntie or uncle just pipes up and says something like, well, it's only one ice lolly, I'm, I'm sure they'll be fine. It's not exactly the same. I mean, I'm not planning on climbing a mountain and fighting any trolls with Reggie. At least anytime soon. But these are great grounded moments that help push the narrative along and put a little smile on my face. I'm also glad to say that you won't be babysitting Atreus in combat. There have been plenty of situations where I've only won because of a move that Atreus did, a combo we performed together, or just his constant barrage of arrows he can fire. Atreus proves his place on this father-son team time and time again, even if Kratos struggles to put it into words about how he feels. Throughout the game, you can see Kratos struggling to guide him on how he should act or what he should do. Like any parent, he clearly wants what's best for Atreus. But because of how shut off Kratos has become, Atreus isn't able to pick up on why Kratos says or does certain things. He doesn't understand the backstory or the gravity to those decisions, advice or rules he lays out. And that leads Atreus to become visibly frustrated with him at times. And from our point of view, it's understandable. Are you serious? I found the deer. I proved myself! How am I not ready? We are going home. As someone who has struggled to be open and communicate clearly with people in my own life, it hit hard a good few times. At times I was screaming at my TV for Kratos to just open up, speak to him, let him understand why. But he didn't, he couldn't. For Atreus to understand would mean explaining to him who he is, who he was, what he did, at those points, you realise Kratos is not only protecting his son from who he was, but he's also protecting himself. I raise this point to say that it isn't a new start for Kratos. We may be in a new land with a new cast of characters, but we're building and pulling from the story of its predecessors. It still feels like a big jump from the past games, but we're not just running away from those lessons and starting anew. We're exploring those old ones through a new light, that of a parent who has lived through those moments and watching how he then tries to carry on with his new life. The struggles of trying to start again with the knowledge and fear that everything he has built could come falling down if the past comes back to haunt him. I'm sure any parent or even person who has somebody they just care about understands this. You want those people to see the best side of you. You want to protect them from the pain you've gone through. Try teach them the same lessons you've learned without them having to go through that pain. 
I loved playing through this as it's such a human and relatable subject. What Kratos does throughout the game I know I've done in my past, unwillingly and willingly. I'm even questioning what I want my own son to know about me when he grows up. How do I want my son to see me? There aren't many low points on this journey. I think the game is well paced and if I had to pick any holes in it, I feel like I really would just be nitpicking. They say the sign of a good story is that it stays with you after the credits. It can help influence decisions you make later in life. It can be something that keeps you up at night thinking about it. I feel like I've become a little more open and have in my head already made changes as to how I want to parent going forward. I don't think it's a parenting class disguised as a video game, but it's not half bad for a game that still has those enjoyable moments of ripping through enemies. Now being a father of the year simulator is one thing, but it's not going to be worth playing if the combat isn't pulling its weight. And I'm happy to say there's a reason it's called God of War. Kratos isn't an agile fighter, but it's fair to say he does move quicker than you might expect. He relies mainly on either his weapons, which take off a lot of health, or his fists, which although don't do a lot of damage, instead they cause an enemy stun bar to fill up. Once this is full, it will allow you to perform a special attack which insta-kills most small enemies while doing big damage to the bigger ones. Atreus, on the other hand, offers more support, either dishing out cover fire on your command or performing small combos that do decent damage and even if this doesn't kill an enemy, it keeps them occupied for a few vital seconds, so you can either keep the pressure on or turn your attention to enemies elsewhere. It's a simple combat design that has you making small, constantly meaningful decisions throughout a battle. A lot of different factors mean that depending on the enemies you're up against, it may be better to use Atreus' bow to take out those flying enemies, while you work on killing the ones rushing you with your axe. Other times, it may be better to use Atreus to help stun enemies, while you go ham on them with your fists, building up that stun gauge and giving you some invincibility frames while you're ripping enemy apart. Or, use even bigger enemies to level the playing field. However, this doesn't mean the game will go easy on you. Kratos is surprisingly fragile and can only take a few big hits before hitting the dirt. You need to know what you're doing. Get good at using that dodge and shield button. Watch the enemy's patterns and learn what's coming next so you can punish it. I don't think it's quite Dark Souls level of hard or intimidating to play, but the game's combat starts at a low level of difficulty and constantly just gets that little bit harder and that little bit harder. It never let me just switch off. I was always engaged with new and multiple types of enemies coming at me. The on the fly thinking of who to go after next and how I should take on the next foe to avoid getting overrun. Performing that last second parry with my shield to gain an advantage all without getting overzealous and getting hit myself. The feeling of ripping through a tough wave of enemies using only your skill and knowledge made it feel like a battle well won. I loved it. It probably surprises no one to know that the combat team took inspiration from the Dark Souls series when creating this combat system. And I'm glad to see this kind of gameplay being used more frequently, rather than being made too easy to appeal to more casual gamers. It's nothing personal, but the game as a whole gains a lot from making you feel like you earned that loot or the next part of the story if it took some real effort to beat it. It definitely has that feeling of when you die, you feel like it was your own fault, rather than the game cheating or the game not performing your input. The number of times I died and thought, I could have dodged that swing, I knew it was coming, or I just need to be more patient and wait for that animation to finish before charging again, helping to stop any deaths I did have becoming too frustrating. The number of fights you have in the game will vary on what you do. The game puts you in the direction of the main goal, but nothing is stopping you from taking the scenic route and exploring a far off cave or fork in the road if you want to. The reason you would want to do this is that you are rewarded every single time you do. Collectibles, money used to buy upgrades and new pieces of armour, rare crafting materials and more. There are so many big games like this that I can't say this about, but this game really respects your time. Improve upon it only. If 
you're making the effort to take down an optional boss, puzzle, or explore an optional area, you get rewarded for it. If you just streamline the main game, you'll miss out on about half of what the game has to offer. So it's something I can strongly recommend you do and take some time out to go explore those extra areas. The narrative is set up in such a way that you don't have a time limit to complete your goal. Nothing is stopping you. The world won't end if you don't go do your next objective right away. And that's nice. I don't feel guilty about searching for dragons or weapon upgrades. Oh yeah, by the way, this game has dragons as well. It, it, it's just good stuff, good stuff for all. There's probably more I could say about God of War. I mean, I haven't even gone over the endgame content, the armor sets, unlocking new combat moves, the fighting dragons bit. But if I'm honest, I don't want to spoil it for you. The big takeaways I had were an amazing and somehow, despite playing as an actual god, who can tear through a monster's face better than I can tear through a share sized bag of Maltesers, grounded story. A combat system that tests you time and time again to master its controls and father some mechanics. And a world that's bursting with meaningful things to do. And meaningful rewards if you do. So if you have a PS5 or even just a base PS4, it's a game I can absolutely say you should play. And I would strongly push you to complete it. Kratos has come a long way from the rage-filled gameplay of the first game. And it took a new direction to truly turn God of War into something that's not just a PlayStation exclusive, but a gaming icon to a new generation of gamers, and a bona fide system seller moving forward. I can't wait to see what the team at Santa Monica have for us next. Having seen the development documentary on YouTube and the love, sweat and tears they put into this one, I'm sure we'll be in for something special. But with that said, I hope you love playing through this game. Stay strong, stay safe, and I will see you next time.